All right. Welcome to GXP. You already know who we are, and today I definitely have a couple things. Now, music is a bit a bit slow and weird for me as I of agree. late because I've kind of been diving more into older stuff and the current releases that I can even gloss over have been stuff that I just haven't been interested in. Although I will touch upon the Kanye project. Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign, so I'm not a particular fan of Ty Dolla Sign myself. I think it, Ty could be, be a, Ty, he's a 50-50 for me to be honest. It... With that being said, I didn't enjoy the project. I think the instrumentation was good as always. It's a Kanye project. The instrumentation is going to be nice regardless. Um, and nothing particularly caught me. That's what I'll say. Um, anything uttered out of recent that i could gloss over that i even really heard i heard the yeek project was solid i haven't touched it yet I've and heard it's decent on my end in terms of like people and anything else let's see i know both of us kind of glossed over the 1999 project that was good i will admit that was good and i don't have a whole opinion on it yet because i haven't finished listening to it but what i heard the track list was really good the track list has been really good so far the features have been nice and everything's been pleasant it reminds me of it honestly gives me shades of midsummer madness oh yeah for back sure. in the day so like it's very much like okay this is a 88 project it's gonna be it's gonna be cool you're gonna have some features that you're not expecting to be here uh buster rhymes definitely was strange for me and <laughs> recent, I, although strange in a good way, I like when Buster shows up on projects. Regardless oh yeah, for sure. Because usually... now it's like far in between. I barely hear that man. <laughs> so it's always pleasant to see. Oh, he's here. Okay, cool. Um, one of the things that has been like my focus music-wise is I've been touching upon a lot of stuff that I haven't really given a listen previously that I've always put on like the back burner and list. Ah, uh, the backlog. Well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of those things is that I de I dive deeply into Hozier's discography. Oh, really? Yes, love their stuff. And I always like kind of like folk ink, folk folk indie to some extent. Like I've been mm -hmm. like also really big on like uh, a name like Paris Paloma, who's like been making waves on like TikTok and stuff like that in terms of music. And then mm -hmm. Pat been going past that. Um, I also have jumped back to like a lot of seventies music. So I, even in a lot of stuff I was listening to was like Fleetwood Mac. I've actually gotten into Fleetwood Mac finally, which is like extremely, not only extremely late, like it's something that's like you normally, pe normally people that listen to my genre choices would have already listened to this stuff. And I'm like, no, okay, oh, really yeah, good. Yeah. I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> so and that and listening to old billy projects but that's just normal so that's where my music have been music journey has been as of late it's pretty much been the same for me for like this past week besides the the hello project it which i enjoyed i like the whole retro sound because i actually listened to the whole project all the way through so it's actually nice all the way through there's good interludes good transitions between tracks and honestly for some reason randomly this week i decided to go back and listen to it's gonna be strange all the the baby metal i've missed i've gotten back into my baby metal bag which is random as hell but man they've made some slappers over the years that i've missed and i'm mad that i missed them <laughs> I definitely like Baby Metal as well, and speaking of which, that reminds me, I actually did listen to a couple of East, a couple Eastern projects as well, and um, one of the things too, I guess this is new, one of the things too is that I've been listening to a lot of Atarashi E, Gakko, there's, and like, yeah, so like, I am full-fledged a fan of uh, Suzuka Bias in particular, <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as like that goes, I they're just dope. I just love the energy of Atarashi. 
So it's it, pretty, every new track they drop, it's it's similar, but it's it's different. Like the the sounds different, but the same energy is there. I admit that yeah, they definitely have like a certain flow to them, and I do like to see where the sound develops here because this is like some of their like like from what i gathered of some of their first work like i'm pretty sure like a recent debut so oh yeah, with, that yeah. being, with that being said it's like there's a lot of places that they can this can go and already like the vision in the general like vibe that they give off is very much nice and i do appreciate the fact that like even there is a underlying story that's coming happening as well which is very interesting to see so i'm I've trying to figure out too. <laughs> I'm trying to see where they push this concept. I did, in recommendation from you, I did also listen to a slight amount of BB. Yes. Not as much, not as much as like I would have liked, but because I've been in like, like I said, my Fleetwood Hozier bag. Yeah. But like, it's definitely like I said, it's nice. It's, it's, it's simple, simple answers today. Nice <laughs> is what it was. I know. I saw that she dropped a track this week too. I'm like, damn, I need to listen to that. That's actually what prompted it. Oh really? I yeah. Saw I, the, need... I saw the track. I saw the track drop in my subscription feed, and then I was like, okay, yeah, I guess this is a good time if I need to listen to some BB. Let's go. Yeah. And then I ended up on that train. And I Let's... guess last last one for me, I. <laughs> I started to dive into a new group recently debuted i think around october of last year it's one of the first of the fifth generation of k-pop groups which is insane to think about they're it's a group of of all rappers a girl group could they go by young posse i've heard the name before don't know anything about them though the their debut track is kind of nutty and i'm i'm leaving it at that is because i low-key want to save that as probably the first episode into the series that we're going to be doing of me introducing you to new stuff in terms of the k-pop world so i'm definitely gonna technically avoid the track until then if that's the case and i'm also um i think my last thing would be that i did end up looking at oh suburban i've been listening to a lot of suburban and i think, I, think I only know one song of suburban and it's <laughs> cradles probably, i think yeah it's probably cradles yeah <laughs> fortnite festival type beat oh my god <laughs> they're really i just like the dark sound i like the dark but yeah it's it's like dark yet smooth and i really just like that balance of sound when it comes to music sometimes so it just worked out um on a different note since that pretty much wraps gaming i am going to bring up our my first major point of something that happens so on the mm. same day february 13th we had the apex and overwatch season start now i'm gonna start with overwatch because of the fact that i ended up not really exploring it myself but i've heard from people that i reliable people that i trust on how their takes on the season and basically what i'm hearing is that dps is extremely meta right now and past that um the game has a different flow to it it still kind of sucks to play tank from what i'm gathering I will say I not... put in like three, four hours of the new. I wanted to see how this new, this whole rework went. And what I can gather, it seems like someone over at Blizzard's like, hey, what if we want the fights to last longer? Which is funny because they said they're trying to keep the kill time relatively the same. So if the fights are lasting longer, but okay, so that's like kind of opposite to what I'm hearing because I'm hearing that like tanks are dying extremely fast. Maybe I just didn't put enough time in because obviously more people did put in time, but that's what I got off for my first three to four hour session. I mean, I can see it going either way, especially with the DPS passive being what it is, like the DPS passive actively, actively removed. so insane. Like, <laughs> like lowering healing and stuff like that 
so the healing reduction and the fact but also with the healing passive across the board now is an interesting thing so i'm not sure exactly how that goes and i'm gonna play it eventually i just haven't really been in the mood for nothing really been calling me or dragging me to go go play it right now and which is funny because i've also heard the battle pass skins are amazing like the battle oh, pass they is look pretty amazing good. they're they're definitely like they're they're they basically are like cthulhu based skins i see i see um another thing which i have played a decent amount i Your wheelhouse <laughs> have been so as i said uh last podcast i believe apex was on like his last straw with me for like <laughs> for how we played and i can straight up say with the rework and the restructure of the game that it is probably my favorite season next to season three quite the turnaround <laughs> and it comes down to a couple factors rank feels playable kills are rewarded and the structuring of it, it just is more consistent and you get the proper information of like okay i did this i did this i did this i know why i got these points everything is starting mm -hmm. to make sense like it feels more rewarding to play and as far as the gameplay loop itself between the perk system which is so good honestly so good it brings so much new it brings such new life to the legends themselves and the flow of the game and them rewarding you shields for like doing actions that you're supposed to be doing with your characters just the way that the game rewards you for playing the game but not just rewarding you in one aspect like you're not just only focused on placements or only focused on kills yeah. or it's the team base the, and even the team based aspect being uplifted a bit just is nice personally and that with that being said it's just made it more consistent and i've been really appreciating the fact that they managed to do that so i actually honestly will give kudos to respawn for making the game playable <laughs> i would <laughs> imagine it. so especially like after i think last season you said you basically said you just didn't feel you didn't feel like you earned anything for like the amount of like kills or objectives you were completing within said game time it's literally like it felt as if the certain characters were just straight up unpickable and it passed that it was just so many things that you did and like so much grinding you did and you went absolutely nowhere like i put like you played with me before i'm yeah not the greatest player in the world but i'm not bad oh, yeah, and no. i was consistently under the last couple systems we had i was consistently placing like bronze and silver so mm -hmm. like it was one of those things where like i didn't feel as if i was getting to where i wanted to get to and if the only way i was going to is if i grinded like triple the time i did and with the amount of games that are out i can't do that yeah. so it's one of those things it doesn't where, feel like, like you have to be logged in all hours of the day just and then go through the like it didn't feel like it doesn't feel like a slog to get through and like i'm genuinely motivated to play this season like i've been playing even in my off time with this season compared to other seasons so i again like i said i give full kudos to respawn for actually fixing a lot of the problems that he i had with the game and the quick turnaround was nice because it was literally make or break for me when it came to the when it came to the game itself and i love yeah. apex so i really didn't want it to be that and like i want something to play with my blood hunt you know <laughs> yeah, so, yeah it's like that's it's why it's like the blood I, hunt's nice but there's this whole open slot now <laughs> exactly so i definitely want it so i'm definitely glad that i can play both and feel good about playing both and even then there's still so much stuff that we have to get through because like i want to see how this unfolds because i feel like what's gonna matter is honestly streamer reaction and a reaction to those people that are really focused on those streamers because like another thing about that too is that like if it feels good for top player then if it feels good for the top players and stuff like that then i know that this will stick around and then they'll be able to focus on it but i do think that this is the system that respawn needs to build upon i will say of if anything the perk system alone makes me want to just hop back in and try just heroes i haven't played in a minute 
that I just dropped because it didn't feel like they were worth playing at the current time that we were playing. It's a different flow state. It's genuinely a different flow state. Like you'll get your shield and then you get like, okay, my perk. And now, now that you have your perk that's like helping out one of your abilities or like helping you be able to do something else, you flow into being able to get to the next thing. And then with the harvesters and stuff like that, and you're doing your little side quests in order to get towards <laughs> your shield so you can actually play the game. Cause like usually everyone has about there's like usually maybe two purples and a blue, depending on if that blue was like suffering that game. By the time you get like to the last couple circles and people are actually dying at a decent pace. So like the pacing of the game just feels better, especially since rain scamming isn't as prevalent, which yeah. is extremely nice. So with that being said, like I said, I am very happy about season 20 and I'm the only issue I have right now is that there are bug inconsistencies that are happening with certain things, especially like with like lobby stuff and all of that. And it just gets weird sometimes, but I reach but EA servers are kind of just EA servers. It's kind of like the yeah. 2K ser it's kind of like the 2K server thing where you're like, this is kind of just the experience that they point. work when they want to work. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things about that. So like, but when I'm playing the game, it's fun. And but it, when yeah. those issues come up, they are still those issues. So <laughs> iron that out. Perfect season. And like I said, I haven't felt that way since season three. So it's been some time. It's been a minute. And um, moving a bit forward, and I'm going to touch on this lightly because while I am informed, I'm not fully, I'm not fully informed on every aspect of it, and that would be the Capcom Cup situation. Oh, <laughs> and oh, man, the lottery system gotta go. It, it gotta go. It's just, I understand that it's going to be so much, it's different in like how they're handling the system. And like they probably tried to curate it for quite some time, but it's causing some just general issues. And I know that's going to be weird for the viewing experience as well, because some of these really great matches, especially with the hell, hellscape that is group F, some of yeah. these great matches are going to get swept kind of into the by the wayside especially since we don't know what's actually getting coverage and it would just also be weird if like the coverage was mostly focused on like somebody on something like group f since group f is where we know we want those matches to be so yeah. i kind of feel bad for the players that are in that group but i also kind of feel bad that this is the system we're going with i'm hoping that the announcement about e the esports moving forward is that they move back to an older system because i feel like they had it more right with like how points were handled previously versus how stuff is handled now now don't get me wrong something like this would have been easier for somebody like me to make it because i'm not the type of player like while i take street fighter series i'm not the type of player that's like able to travel to constant tournaments and stuff like that like literally yeah. like at most this, at most this year i'm probably about to hit one local and then i'm probably about to hit one local which is anime blues and then i'm if life is nice to me this time evo so yeah. we'll see how we'll see how that goes and stuff like that but even then i wonder how that's going to unfold um and that's just the general premise of it but i'm excited for i'm excited to watch the matches that we can watch and i'm also excited for ed because ed looks fun he just does so i think uh street fighter has some things to get through because i think they do need to actually speed things up in terms of how what stuff content coming out and also how stuff is certain how certain stuff is handled but i feel like it has to speed up with how spaced out it is because since they're they're really sticking to this no patch until a whole last year later and that's just keeping the game the same i understand there's so much more to find over time but like now when when Mortal Kombat and Tekken are getting updated every other week to like month and stuff, it's just <laughs> and then just looking at Street Fighter stay the same. Yeah, because like at least I hate to be that person, but at least they can speed the characters dropping. Cause like people are just waiting for a coma. Like people are excited about it now because of the gameplay, but people are waiting for a coma. So uh, don't even the people were so upset when they said, uh, by the way, no Kuma at Capcom Cup, but you know, you could still watch. Uh, so we kind of like, we just need to, I just, 
I just I'm not saying like rush don't get me wrong but I would love for them to pick up the pace just a bit because with the with the amount with the attention span of, with the attention span of how people are handling stuff now is not a situation where we can just kind of like go to this teatering pace I don't think mm-hmm. that's particularly it especially, especially when, when the a- last updates were it went from like it was the turtles and then like a couple months later it was the spy family spy one family. which is the costume for the avatar which were both think, avatar things i think baki was somewhere in between that but even then it was yeah. like titles and stuff so it's one of those things where it's like yeah we need more for the game and even if it's stuff i am be honest with you even if it's stuff like more world tour stuff to do i would appreciate that because like it's something because the more and, the the world t- tour stuff we get is tied with the characters that are dropping <laughs> exactly so we like at least some way to expand upon the story or something like so just something more to bite on because like street fighter 6 has a lot of content do not get me wrong but yeah, I think, yeah like i said the pacing is just a bit off and that's their main problem the pacing and how the esports scene is being handled and those two things need to get fixed um and my last major point and this is just a bland statement but it's something that like <laughs> i really need to touch upon tekken is fun tekken 8 is fun. oh my god <laughs> tekken is so fun i'm not even like for both of us this is like the first tekken that we're like really going gun ho in about like we're just locked in with this tekken and man this is some of the most fun in a fighting game i've had in years i agree because my thing is is that i've been a cat i've been a tekken no me wrong i've been around i've been a tekken casual for years now and it's been that way since tag one even and <laughs> i've been playing since tag one but in that same sense i haven't really taken the time to actually learn tekken never was fully motivated to but this game with this roster with these systems with this look with the sound, with the jukebox, with everything that's in the game and the core foundation of the game while also having so much offline stuff to do as well, I've been invested and I've been getting and I've even been doing something where like I've been trying to get to red rank because red rank is probably like the highest I've ever been Mm -hmm. in a Tekken game and I just want to reach red rank and then just play it out and then (laughs) even in as even with that it's not like the biggest goal out there but at the same time it's something and yeah i've just been but the fact that i've been motivated to play like ranked and like even not only like apex but like something like this and not only this but street fighter and stuff like that i feel as if gaming is getting into a better direction with me which is nice considering the fact that we just got through talking about how it was going downhill so it's kind of funny yeah to see it's like turnaround. it feels like everything everywhere just heard us be like maybe we should maybe we should do something about this situation and then it's just literally happened within the past two weeks fun games have come out oh if i see one more drake custom i'm going to fight somebody i am tired god i'm tired i will say that tekken 8 as soon as as soon as people found out what they can do the light skin plague took over (laughs) god damn I'm tekken 8 over it and it's always the mishimas i'm <laughs> over it so much bro, but it was such a mistake adding in the boozy fade bro uh because if it was just a tan sure that's been in every tekken but it's the fade <laughs> It's like, bro, like, I'm not trying to see Kutsuya hit the barber. It's not, it's not with it, bro. Like, no, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. But, but past that, yeah, it's been a good experience. And we're going to be covering Tekken more as things develop, especially when Eddie comes out and even before Eddie comes out. And Tekken is probably going to be a consistent talk of the podcast for a bit. So, oh, yeah, for sure. It's new and it feels like, as of right now, it's the most consistent, updated. But well, not like most, you know, we're still finding stuff. We're in like that honeymoon phase still, but I don't know if this is just a honeymoon phase or this is just like one of those games that's going to feel good all the way through until something just changes in one random update that just fucks everyone. 
So that's the thing. I genuinely believe that it's going to be fine in the sense of like I'm pre usually my takes on games don't change that drastically. Yeah. I mean, and the fact I'm enjoying it this much would means a lot towards the game itself. And I think that with that being said, it's going to be one of it's going to be interesting to see where it does develop because I want to know because I gotta know what the characters are after Eddie, especially considering the fact that Eddie is going. To, I feel with the heat system, Eddie's going to be crazy so eddie was already a problem for me and the past tekken's that i even just barely touched this man flipping around just messed me up and i can't even imagine what he's gonna do with heat follow-ups heat smashes it's just definitely oh gonna God. be a scrub definitely <laughs> gonna be a scrub killer i know that for a fact like it's you're block gonna low, have to block low. <laughs> yeah absolutely so like it's gonna be one of those situations and um let's see going through real quick that covers that all right um i guess we've gotten to the point to which we need to talk about it it seems as if that this little this one's gonna be a bit shorter than our normal episodes but at the same time i've been hearing you've been up to some things and i want to hear about it and i also have something else to ask you about to check up on since i haven't been playing but I'm gonna ask that after the fact. So oh yeah, for sure. We both know what it. We both know what this is about. So go ahead. So around last year, at this point, I started Persona 4 Golden because obviously I wanted to. I needed to fill something with some JRP areas, and I wanted to try to finish it so I can get to. Well, it, it's a funny story because I started it so I can just start getting through it. So then I can probably play Persona 3 Portable because at the time that was the port that had happened. Well, somewhere between when I first started Golden, P3 Reload got announced. I'm like, well, this is perfect. So it got me back into like fully investing into Persona 4 Golden at the beginning of this year again because i fell off because i just got way too busy at the end of last year and the middle of last year but man i can see why this is a lot of people's favorites like off rip i know i still have to get through three but there's just something about persona 4 gold it has like it just feels good it's a it's a very pleasant game and for context i'm an smt persona guy gal individual we never got into it not getting into it now um so with that being said um i've been playing i've played all of them and my my favorite being two innocent sin and out of the modern ones well, in terms of personas, anyway. My favorite being two innocents in and out of the modern ones, it would be three. So, like, it's interesting to see that how, like, the build up to getting to what my favorite game is. Because <laughs> the funny part about it is that you're about to, like, the happy vibes are about to segue directly into depression. It is going to be great. <laughs> the amount of times where I've, I've, I've seen people say that they've, like, they've gone backwards, like how I have even before reload was even a thing the people that have gone backwards from five to four to three it's like wow the just the drastic shift you go from four to three is insane <laughs> and also this is one this is gonna be like that and i'm starting the fight in terms of that oh, um, no. <laughs> in terms of p4 crew yukiko best girl is like that anyway <laughs> i'm not arguing immediately off rip she was the one i love my a... little giggly bitch <laughs> snow black is great bro she's great <laughs> um so another thing with the persona thing and then like as i've been watching you play it mm -hmm. like it's just been interesting to see like like the little oh okay this is where this came from okay this is where this came from especially since like stylistically how the games build up we could you could see how they got to the artistic vision that is five oh yeah know, five oh, yeah, is so sure. drastically different yeah. and the fact that five is now going now about to influence three reload because i haven't touched three, three reload either 
And... I'm so excited to get to it, but like, yeah, just seeing what they took from five and the little glimpses of like trailers and stuff I've seen for three reload is it looks so pretty too. Also, still four does have one of my favorite persona tracks, period, because Signs of Love is an absolute bop. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> and um it's funny because like I still say the highlight of my one of the highlights of my year so far has been you experiencing King's game. <laughs> I was not prepared for that at all. That threw me for a loop. <laughs> like I Which Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, it's cause like I had like this like just, I guess I guess notation set for myself. I'm like, all right, so this is what they could possibly do from like, you know, my knowledge of playing Persona I Royal and Strikers, even Vanilla. I'm like, all right, this is how wild they could get. <laughs> that <laughs> immediately threw that out. <laughs> and it's funny because like I still think that's like one of the that's like one of the funniest moments. I feel like it, that is in the Persona games and stuff like that, and even past that, it's kind of interesting too because like you see the dichotomy of like the protagonist, especially considering the fact that like okay, Joker is kind of like evil, but he's like he's kind of like evil, but he's like a good guy at heart and all that stuff and like that. Like he'll make a snarky comment, yeah. and then you was and then you was just chatting it up twenty four seven. Throughout <laughs> playing this game for like the past like solid three weeks now you somehow passed i mean like i love joker don't get me wrong but the what this suave that this man you has is insane the the options that be popping up for any uh, anybody not just the women it's like bro you, you're just gonna say that just because <laughs> That's the thing. You can see with Joker, with Ren, that he, like, tries a little bit. And then the fact that it's, like, you just <laughs> saying stuff that, like, comes to his mind is, like, hilarious. And then, like I said, I cannot wait till you get to my boy Makoto because, bro. <laughs> I've heard some stuff about Makoto. I, I, that, that, I'm going to leave it at that because I've, that's literally all I've heard. I've just heard some stuff. The absolute savagery of that character <laughs> i cannot like wait. one of the recent things about you I, that happened to me that just like brother was it happened recently it was on one of the rainy days and and one of the the, the female uh, friends came up and <laughs> she said it, it like she came up because she didn't have an umbrella and then she's like said made room for it and then she's like, you should scoot closer because you're going to get wet if you stay that far out. And this the one I picked the option, obviously, because it was hilarious. Man said, oh, I'm sexier when I'm wet. I'm, <laughs> what? <laughs> He's just with it, bro. Dude, that's, I, I don't know how to I don't know what better way to describe that you has you is just with it in terms of like all of that. And it's fun like i said it's funny because there's so much to there's so much to four especially since you're playing golden as the first version too mm -hmm. so like all the little it's just all the little details and stuff about how um it is although i will say your route has been easier than mine because oh, i really? kept i kept izanagi all the way through i was tempted to because even i did that with arsene I'm like, all right, I'll just, I'll just never fuse him. I'll just keep it. And if I do accidentally, because sometimes they just force you to, like any persona does, I'll just buy him back in the compendium. My stupid ass forgot to register him in the compendium. So Izanaki's just gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. It's still it's still interesting, especially since I can see that you're like doing a lot of the side questing and stuff like that in the game as well. I was trying like, to at first I was like when I got back into it, I'm like, alright, I'm gonna just try to like blitz through the game so I can have it done for reload. But by the time reload was like a like a two or three days away. Girl Scouts. 
A. Uh, understandable. What flavor? <laughs> uh, she gave me... I don't know what this is. They're brownies, apparently. Not even a Girl Scout cookie at that point? Oh. Well, they're shaped like a cookie. This just threw me all the way off. Oh, okay. Oh, what were we talking about? Sorry. Uh, I <laughs> no, we were talking about the you you made it the the harder route because you kept in yeah. the all the way through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> it's um. So, yeah, I it was just. It was a it was a fun experience though, regardless. And I, like I said, for like I cherish the Persona games a lot, and I still cannot wait for six when that eventually happens because we all know it's going to happen at some point. I feel like their Persona is like the... on a roll right now, so I feel like at this point they have the six has to be the next one. So my personal guess is that we're gonna get four. My personal guess four is gonna get redone like three, then six. I feel like you would have. I feel like four would have to come after six. I feel like I'm on like the same like wavelength as you, but I feel like I feel like they're gonna resonate evil. I think they're gonna start going that route. I feel like since five's coming out, then they did three, then they're gonna do six and then four. Kind of like how Resident Evil's been doing. Like there was seven, then there was two, then eight, then the that there was no there was a year it was two and then three and then eight and then four so, so i feel like they're my, gonna start in a 20 home that that would be that would be pretty good my personal hope is that somehow even though there's certain content in that game i know makes that extremely difficult somehow they end up finding a way to be able to redo two because i'm gonna just give you the premise of two and then I feel like well, the, to, the one thing I oh go ahead first. I was gonna say the one thing I heard about too is I feel like they people have said like if they do that, that's gonna be a big ass game because I've heard that Persona 2 is two games. Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment. It is two games. Two games, two <laughs> protects. Damn. And the thing, the thing about it, it's a Final Fantasy VII situation where like. It was cut up into disc kind of because of uh, like production and all that stuff but even then it's like because it's technically it's still persona 2 it's still one game they're still sequential but there's some stuff that's like weird because canon and all of that and plus like i said there's certain things happening too that like today's day and age it's, uh, it's a very of its time sort of situation with certain things i won't bring up because you two people know yeah, yeah, yeah. but um another thing about that too is that Tasi is just a full pro tag, but like even then I'm gonna give you like the premise and I'm gonna tell you why this is crazy. Okay, mm. so first off, everyone in that everyone in P2 is a wild card. Oh really? That's one. Yes. And secondly, the premise is rumors can become reality. Wait, what? If a rumor becomes big enough in P2, it becomes reality. That is the premise. <laughs> so like, like a more extreme version of like how in E5, if you believe hard enough, that weapon becomes real in, in, in the metaverse. Yes. Yes. That sounds and insane. <laughs> and keep in mind that, like I said, a lot of like everyone who's in contact with like one, a while book that and two, the fact of like, imagine like this day and age like imagine it's basically imagine if everything that like was widely believed everything that was a mandela effect is reality now oh shit. everyone that thought a certain thing was a certain way when it really wasn't but it's now real <laughs> mm -hmm. and it gets and that's like how crazy that gets and then past that you have a you have a pro tag that's more kind of jaded to the world than even joker and makoto mm. and did yeah there's a there's a lot that goes on and throughout all of that 
and there's and it's funny because it's still i'm pretty sure it's still canon because there's still references to some of the stuff that happens in the later games so I'm i've heard people say that there's references references like on the news for mp5 for some of the characters from one and two mm -hmm. so it's very interesting to see how that goes because like that's something that is different it's like a little weird about the persona verse like there are different ways to get personas and there are different ways to get it to tap into that power but a lot of people have gotten those powers in like various scenarios so the fact that like everyone's power still works but like it just depends under these conditions is kind of interesting so even like especially considering the fact that the earlier the earlier people like p1 p2 they were able to just straight up bring their personas out in reality consistently so because that's just, like in there the was real no, world there was no verse for that there was just <laughs> like people had personas that was kind of just the thing like sometimes there was interdimensional stuff because it's always persona it's always smt but like there was levels to that so i'm hoping that somehow they find a way to do p2 because i really want to see it like even if some stuff has to get censored i don't care i would just like to see tatsu <laughs> I feel like, like any he, other game that they bring out now would probably have to be somewhat rearranged. What I'm, I've heard people say that they're surprised at some of the stuff they even kept in the three remake. But I feel like even playing through four now, I'm like, oh, there's stuff that's getting rewritten to hell if they remake four. Because that would be insane if they keep a lot of the writing of a specific character in today's. <laughs> so are we both talking about yosuke or... yes yes <laughs> i i love you yosuke but god damn my my brother <laughs> yeah so i i could definitely see that and then that's different aspects of that so i'm curious on how things get handled by atlas moving forward but i'm also very much interested to see where things go especially since p3 reload did well right oh like, yeah no it's, it's the best selling, selling game well. It sold like a million in the first week. I guess oh. Atlas learned the infinite money glitch of oh what that's what happens if we release same day releases worldwide and on everything. Okay, that's that's pretty good then. Especially yeah. for it to be P3. So we I'm only that. imagining because I've heard I'm 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 just going off the guess of what I've heard most people say four is relatively most people's favorite outside you know uh if you're asking most people it'll probably be four or five so that's what i'm saying like if they do that with five that is that is bank right there that they are sitting on and i'm just even thinking about it now going through the game i'm like oh if four gets like the reload music treatment that would be so crazy <laughs> most definitely and it's funny because like i also like as someone who's like out of the modern games because again like i said after two becomes a split of like classic persona modern persona mm -hmm. uh after and as the modern games with three being my favorite even the stuff that they've done i see how like certain stuff so much stuff got like a facelift and um while we're missing a particular segment of the game i would really have liked to be in the game i can see why it did get cut but at the same time i also am like curious because with the treatment of this i th still think from what i've seen p3 was treated very nicely so i'm very happy with that especially considering the fact that i actually don't take in the half but besides the fact that you can control the whole party i don't really like portable as a port of p3 i've heard that about like i heard that a lot when i told most of the discord that we're in that i'm uh p3 is gonna p3 p is gonna be the p3 i'm playing and everybody's like really yeah hey, yeah <laughs> they're like it's the most it's the most user-friendly quality of life one, but that's about it. It's, yeah, it's like, if you want the story, it's, it's a bit weird. But, and, and it's cool, and it's, it sucks because it has interesting concepts. Like, FEMC is an interesting concept, but, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it, again, it's just not my particular thing. <laughs> in terms of those games so i'm glad that like i said reload is doing well and i'm glad that it looks good and i can't wait to play it myself and i'm very much glad you're going through the whole persona journey because like i said it is is quite a it's quite a ride and i can't wait to see you get to the end game with that 
Yeah, I'm um, chugging on through. Wait, one other thing I thought that is interesting that's also dope about three reload before we move on and end it, but like, I think it's insane that there's finally a Persona game out there that's pretty much fully voice acted. True. Because <laughs> going through like four now and then five also, I'm like sitting, like reading these like parts out loud. I'm like, that's kind of insane how much of this is probably voice acting now that I've heard at least from Reload. Like that's that's a lot and that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm very happy about that as well, especially considering the fact that the voices they chose for the characters, even though some of the voices were like, I just like how everything was set out. That's mm -hmm. just the best way I put it. Um, and as a Persona fan, I am happy, straight up. Especially since, like I said, I was very concerned with Atlas, especially after Soul Hackers. Oh, yeah, I've I've heard some things about Soul Hackers. <laughs> So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that it did something to sink my teeth into, give or take. And but, then um, ReZero comes out this year too, right? That new IP from Atlas. I've heard about it, but I don't know much. Me neither. I've only seen like I think the one trailer that they not one trailer, but the only trailer I've seen is the one they showed at the Game Awards. Oh wow. Okay. Um, and I've probably heard even less than you because like i don't think i was even paying attention during that for the most part so mm. it's it gonna be it, so i'll check it out though and see what i can learn about it um there is another point i'm asking about because okay. i actually haven't been i actually haven't been touching upon this and i need to know your take on it because i had my apex feel earlier how's fortnite doing honestly he, there, there was like a rough spot for like a solid like couple of weeks there but that was mostly because all of staff was on vacation so now that they're back on the ball with it updates have been consistent they just added a new battle pass like a mini battle pass it's a tm a teenage mutant ninja turtles battle pass they that have money all, sink. <laughs> that money sink man it, geez. and so there's that that comes with two skins in it and like emotes for each of the turtles in game each of the turtles have their their mythic weapons in it so you have raft sites everybody's it comes with mobility so are they fun are you about to say are they fun to use they're actually really fun to use it it's like most mythics it's hit it like if if you're like i wouldn't say in solo they're like the best if you're with like a like a party then yeah i would say use them but they all come with like the same kind of mobility i know you you play during this season but it's like the each of their mythics has the mobility of the kinetic blade so it has like the three charges to like fly through the air and oh, stuff oh okay 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 so if like, you don't use them as weapons you can use them as mobility pretty much and then they have a recharge because i'm weird about fortnite i really like playing it but it's one of those things because I got so much on my plate, I kind of just finished Battle Pass and now I'm done. So like, oh yeah, no, understandable. Was... Yeah, the, the, just a lot of games right now. <laughs> so it was like I was curious on what was going on. I did hear about the turtles thing, but I wasn't fully sure about what was going on with it because like I, because my I hit my goals for like the season because my goal was finish the Battle Pass, get to Platinum Rocket Racing, play a little bit of Festival, and collect the stuff of Festival I want and oh yeah for that's sure. what i was doing i really need to check back in check back in on lego because i'm pretty sure lego got stuff so i'm wondering i think lego got a couple stuff. updates i don't know if it's like major updates but i know they got some like quality of life and stuff fix bugs and things because i know there was some bugs with the uh, some of the chests earlier on that we found so i think they like fixed those and stuff but for the most part i think i don't think lego's gotten like a major update but a lot of quality of life stuff festivals okay. are still there i feel like that's the most content being given at the moment because it's just like constantly every week it's like five new tracks which is insane i feel like festival is probably the easiest to produce for too especially since they have a whole separate team for it oh yeah for sure and then there's the battle pass on top of that so i just too hope many, too many battle passes i hope some i hope i real real talk i hope some of it gets consolidated 
that's what yeah, i'm hoping yeah. like one of my main wishes like right now because it, it just hit me like when i bought the mini pmnt battle pass so i can get the shredder skins i'm like they have to do something like even if it makes it a little bit more expensive put all of these battle passes into the crew pack please i'll happily just pay a single price just for all of it and just Actually, be done with that that would be dope because like i would take a i would honestly take a price increase on crew pass for that like a flat rate of maybe 20 30 and then you just get all the stuff it's yeah, because like, right now it's 10 and you get a skin every month, a thousand V-Bucks every month. So if you bump that up to between like 20, 25, I feel like that's a decent price jump for all battle passes. And then if people don't want that and just want the regular battle pass one, just have a separate option for the still $10 one. Yeah, like crew pass and then crew pass elite or something. Yeah, like, something like that. I just, so, it feels like I, I just need a way to like condense my fortnite spending into just a single thing instead of having to spend 10 here 10 here and 10 there that's 30 dollars just on battle passes this past season alone which you also still have to complete so you're going through yeah. it and you're like yeah it's it's one of those it's, it's definitely like a lot and that's what it was like i felt even when i heard about like i saw like even the festival pass i was like a yeah. little bit overwhelmed because i don't play a lot of festival and especially since i don't well i play festival but like i played on like dude i'm not a rock band player i'm not a rhythm game person i play on like medium so like... oh yeah no understandable i feel like i'm definitely gonna play more festival when that new guitar thing that that one company is making for for... Oh, yeah, because they are making a custom controller for it, huh? Yeah, it's not specifically for Fortnite Festival, but, like, it got announced at the same time Fortnite Festival got announced. So it's, like, you know, it's made for it. Yeah. Obviously, so I feel it's, like it's, it's, it's when I see the price for that and then buy it, I'll probably just probably go hard on that. <laughs> that's smart and like i said i'm probably gonna try to maybe get like plat at least each season for like racing and then go for there because like i love i love racers like i i needed a new i needed a new racer in the catalog anyway and like the racing I should not be as good at it as it is it's so fun because my only choice was between that and like maybe uh underground which mm -hmm. i've heard very mixed things about underground so like i don't know so Same. that's what like, I need to get. I needed to get my rig. I needed to get my racing fix regardless, and that so that was nice. Um, to be honest, I think that covers actually our major topics for this week. So yeah, we covered stuff that happened this week, and you know, recap for the the other weeks in between. So. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, if there's any again with our scheduling stuff like that if there's any inconsistencies it really just comes down to sometimes like with all the flow and flow state especially since we have so much stuff on the plate now it's gonna be a little bit weird but at the same time I'm gonna try to still make sure we get this podcast out as consistently as we can moving forward um if, if it's not up a week you know just keep checking back just know that when a podcast go up it will always be on a Friday at 12.30 PST Eastern or no Pacific time. Yeah. So with that being said, um, I think, like I said, we got everything covered. We got our bases covered and stuff like that. And there was one more thing that I do actually need to touch upon. Oh, yeah, just really quickly as a sprinkle. Um, play Blood Hunt. All right. Look, we can leave. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in and listening, or whatever you're doing. Thanks for listening, as always. I am Kristoff. Melody Ghost. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.